Welcome, everyone, to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Well, Tracy, January is National Blood Donor Month, and it's the perfect time to resolve to, to be a regular blood donor and help save lives. January could be a, a tough month for blood banks for a couple of reasons. First of all, there's often bad weather, at least in this part of the country. Mm-hmm. And second of all, oftentimes people are, are sick with either a bad cold or the flu, and they, they can't get in to donate blood. The Red Cross has to collect 13,000 blood donations every day to be able to help all of the patients that are in need. And joining us in studio to talk about blood and blood donation is transfusion medicine medicine physician at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Justin Kreuter. Welcome back to the program. Hey, thanks for having me back. 13,000 units a day you need. Well, and the Red Cross just collects half of the blood that's used in the country. Another 40% from community blood centers all across America. And then about 10% are people like us at the Mayo Clinic where we have our own hospital-based blood donor program. So I, I would imagine that uh, just having come through the holidays and starting off a new year, maybe the donations dip a little bit during the holidays when people are too busy. And so hitting it hard in January is a good idea. Absolutely. Plus, it's a time for New Year's resolutions. And I mean, it's a wonderful resolution to get out and help other people in our community. You're helping cancer patients, patients that are going through surgeries, as well as just people in our community that have uh, accidents. Are there virtually no side effects to giving blood? Well, a lot of people will kind of feel a little kind of run down after the fact. For a few days or weeks? Exactly. Or? Usually it's just a few days. So, you know, those uh, high school athletes that, that come in and donate, usually we don't see them before a big event, but uh, after the fact. So uh, you, you donate a pint, let's say. That's usual, isn't it? Yep. And how many pints do we have? Oh, yeah. what's in there? <laughs> How many are going around? Yeah, we we have on average about uh, ten pints uh, in our oh, body, so, so we take like about ten percent, and that's by design. That's why you know we've got these weight uh, minimums, and that's why we got some of our donor criteria to make sure that what we are taking away is appropriate for you, and is not exceeding anything that might become concerning for your health. Okay, so you can donate blood, you can donate platelets. Rick, our engineer, is a is a wonderful deer who's donating platelets. God bless him. That's yeah. right. What else can you donate? So uh, whole blood, and that's what we use to manufacture different products, platelets specifically. We also have donors that donate uh, plasma uh, specifically, and those are really going to be based on your blood type. It really depends on what donation is probably best. For example, a lot of times we talk about group O blood or even more specifically group O negative blood that we use in emergency situations. It's when you don't know someone's blood type. Exactly. You can give that to anybody. Yeah, group O blood uh, is safe to give to anybody. Uh, and and for that reason, when somebody comes in and donates, uh, I know, uh, I think the Red Cross calls it Power Reds uh, donations, when you donate a two units. So if I have a group O donor come into our blood donor program and we have a little bit of, uh, they have a little bit of extra time because it takes about a half an hour to donate two units of red cells instead of to donate a unit of whole blood is around 15 minutes. But for an O donor that comes in, we get twice the amount of uh, of product that we can use for our patients. If you flip that around on the other side, if somebody is uh, has a blood group AB, their plasma is really the valuable thing that they can donate for the community. And so if somebody's group AB comes in uh, to donate, I, I want to ask them, hey, are, are you okay with uh, donating plasma? Uh, because that plasma is what we can use to give to everybody. That's the fluid. Exactly. That's the yellow kind of straw colored stuff that suspends our our red cells and our platelets uh, floating through our bloodstream. And so why would it be better for someone to get plasma as opposed to um, sodium chloride, an IV with liquid? Oh, well, now you get into some of the uh, uh, great uh, debates out there. You know, uh, uh, turns out that uh, as in trauma care, uh, what we've uh, come to understand is that resuscitating or give something, give something back fluid, to give back the fluid that they're losing is really what we should be doing. It's got all the coagulation factors. It has a right oncotic pressure to keep things inside the vessel that should be inside the vessel versus uh, normal saline. Oh, okay. So plasma is obviously better. 
Would you say overall most of the blood products are used by trauma victims, or, or who gets most of the blood that you uh, receive? Well, it's going to vary by hospital to hospital. Uh, you know, if you have a women's and children's hospital, there's going to be obviously a lot of that blood's going to be used for uh, babies or mothers that are experiencing hemorrhage after delivering. In contrast uh, to a hospital like us, uh, we do have a level one trauma center, so we do have a lot of our blood going to support patients in our community. Nationally, though, I think the biggest uh, users are patients that are suffering from cancer, so that we're supporting them through the their treatments so they can live to fight another day and get relief from some of those symptoms. I can tell you, it just feels so good. When you're a <laughs> cancer patient, to get that transfusion, is it, it's amazing how good it feels. <laughs> And that's, so that's you nice had someone kind of, you were uh, I did. going through cancer treatment. Yep, when I was going through cancer treatment, I did have one transfusion, and it just feels fantastic when you're feeling so terrible to get that healthy blood feels wonderful i'd like to shine a spotlight on that for all the listeners out there that are have maybe a fear of needles or what this might feel like uh giving blood certainly we have to use a needle so there is a little prick but the pain is very transient very minimal we have very experienced phlebotomists at blood collection centers that are doing this professionally every day and if you put that in the equation with on the other side, a patient is going to experience this very profound uh, relief or at least attenuation of some of their some their suffering. That's pretty profound. It's a huge deal. Yeah. So uh, being an O negative, that's a universal donor. Uh, anybody can get O negative blood, right? That, that's uh, so <laughs> with an asterisk. But yeah, yes. <laughs> yeah. That's what we talk about is the universal donor, because in the terms of uh, compatibility of what blood can we give you safely, Generally speaking, O negative blood is safe for people to receive. So if somebody comes into the uh, emergency room and they are bleeding, hemorrhaging, mm -hmm. how long does it take you to figure out what their blood type is? And in the interim, you give them type O negative blood? Well, it's actually, uh, so we give them type O blood. So uh, you and I, uh, being men, uh, we're going to probably get O positive blood. If I get in a car accident, I've got two young daughters, and if I got them in the car with me and we get in an accident, uh, they're going to give me O positive blood at first, uh, really so that we can cons conserve that O negative blood for my two daughters. My two daughters would be receiving O negative blood. Uh, and that's because why is, that? why do you why is there a difference between males and females? That's because and, and it's is a nice example for me because I actually am Rh negative. So if I get Rh positive blood, uh, I can form this antibody that transfusion medicine docs call anti D. And for somebody like me, it doesn't matter because what it matters for is for our future pregnancies. So people like oh, my okay. daughter, if they form this anti-D, it could cause hemolytic disease of the fetus and newborn. But for me, because I'm never going to get pregnant, it's just going to be something that if I have to get a future transfusion, that hospital is going to have to work a little bit and find the right blood for me. Who's eligible to donate blood? Well... Lots of lots of people in our community are eligible to donate who currently don't donate. There's some national standards, and then there's also some standards that are going to vary by your specific uh, blood collection center. So uh, the two things that people really take into consideration are, are you safe and healthy for donating and losing a, a pint of blood? And on the flip side, is that pint of blood going to be safe for a recipient to receive? So generally speaking, a lot of the things that are regulated nationally uh, are things where you're looking out for the safety of the recipient, such as, you know, that you are, um, you know, the blood is, uh, you don't have HIV or you don't have hepatitis, uh, that you're not sick. Uh, because viruses and things like that can be transmitted through blood transfusion. On the other hand, some of the other things that are um, exclude people, sometimes uh, cancer can exclude somebody from donating, uh, but that, that exclusion from donating is going to vary based on the location of the donor center, what their plan is, because that's really looking out for the donor's health and safety. So I wouldn't want to take a somebody who uh, 
collect them as a blood donor and they might need a blood transfusion themselves uh, later that week. So if people want to know more, uh, redcrossblood.org, so is that good? I think contacting uh, your uh, local blood uh, collection center. So if you Google, uh, you know, blood collection near me, I think hmm. uh, that's probably the best way because there's a lot of uh, Red Cross, there's a lot of community blood centers and hospital-based donor programs. Reach out to them and find out if you can be a donor. And I think it's important to highlight there are some people who uh, are eligible and currently donate, and it would be wonderful if they took this January to make it a challenge to introduce two friends or colleagues uh, to the act of blood donation, bring them along with them. If you have never donated and you're unsure, reach out to find out if you could be a donor. If you could, bring along a friend uh, for moral support and hopefully blood donation. And there are some people in our community who are not eligible to donate, but they certainly can participate in spreading the word because a lot of times we do have these episodes of shortages in various pockets around the country. And those people are an important uh, part of our community to help spread the message that, hey, our local blood center uh, could use some help. I know here at Mayo Clinic, through things like social media, we have a lot of people who are not eligible to donate, but they certainly play a profound role in spreading the word to people who uh, haven't come in yet. And there's a blood donor app too, isn't there? A lot of blood collection centers do have an app, yeah. Do we have one? We don't have one uh, yet, unfortunately. We'll see you next year. <laughs> <laughs> well, millions of people need blood transfusions every year. Blood donation makes it all possible. And January is a good time to become a donor because there are some issues with regard to the weather and health concerns. Our thanks to transfusion medicine physician at Mayo Clinic, Dr. Justin Kreuter. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks for having Dr. me. Kreuter, thank you.